Hey friends, here is an awesome story to kick off our unit on fractions. We're gonna be starting this unit after winter vacation. And this is a tale of mystery and intrigue to get us started. Fractions in Disguise, a math adventure by Edward Einhorn, illustrated by David Clark. Some kids collect baseball cards. Some collect action figures. Me, I collect fractions. I've been collecting them for exactly two thirds of my life. In my bedroom, shelves full of fractions cover three fourths of the walls. Maybe it's because I was born during a half moon, or maybe it's because I'm one fourth genius, one fourth stubborn, one third determined, and one sixth crazy. But for me, it all adds up to one thing. I can't get enough of those darn fractions. So when a brand new five ninths went up for auction, you know I was first in line to buy it. The five ninths is a thing of beauty. When you first look at it, it looks like a one half. But the more you look, the more you realize it's just a little bit more. The room was filled with the, with the regular customers, Baron von Mathematique, Madame der Geometritique, and the mysterious Dr. Brock, a former university professor rumored to have been fired for the illegal possession of a four over zero. I bid one half of a million dollars. Madame der Geometritique bid three fourths of a million. Baron von Mathematique bid seven eighths of a million. Our bids were clearly approaching one million dollars. Would we ever reach it? Suddenly we found ourselves in darkness. There's foul play afoot, cried the Baron. His fears proved true. When the lights went back on, the five ninths was nowhere to be seen. Neither was Dr. Brock. Alas! He's stolen it, exclaimed Baron von Mathematique. He never gets his fractions fair and square, agreed Madame de, Madame de Geometrique. But how can he hope to hide it, I asked. He is a master of disguise, Mr. Factor, Madame de Geometrique explained. He can take a one-half and turn it into a two-fourths or a three-sixths. It's still the same fraction but it looks different. So am I to understand that he could take a three fifths? I began. Multiply the three by four and the five by four, continued Madame de Geometrique, and have something that looks like a 12 twentieths, I concluded. But it's still three fifths really, Madame de Geometrique agreed. He just doesn't want you to know it. My poor, beautiful fraction, wailed Baron von Mathematique. Don't despair, I said. I have an idea. That night, I worked till dawn. By morning, I had what I needed, a reducer. What is a reducer? It's one half ray gun and one half calculator, made from a whole lot of paper clips, a whisk, some discarded computer parts, and sheer ingenuity. What does it do? It removes the disguise from a fraction and reduces it to its lowest terms. I tested it out that morning. For a long time, I had owned a 10 fifteenths, but I suspected that it could be another fraction in disguise. I pointed the reducer at it and dialed a two. The top number, or numerator as we call it in the trade, wavered, trying to turn into a five, but the bottom number, or denominator, stayed the same. I dialed a three, and the denominator tried to transform into a five, but the numerator wouldn't budge. I dialed a four, and nothing happened. Finally, I dialed a five. The fraction changed completely. The 10 became a two and the 15 became a three, leaving me with a sleek two thirds. The reducer was ready to go. 
Dr. Brock lived in a mansion that had to be one-tenth of a mile tall. When I rang the bell, he opened the door halfway. Let me in, doctor, I told him. I know you have the five-ninths in there, and I'm going to find it. Come in, come in, he purred. Take a look around. You'll see no five-ninths in here. I went in. There were fractions everywhere, piled on shelves, bursting from cupboards, covering the floor. There was even an, enormo an enormous one hole hanging from the ceiling. Quickly, I spotted my first fraud. That three out of 21, I said. It's really a one-seventh, isn't it? I pointed my reducer at the fraction and dialed a three. Both the numerator and the denominator were divided, and now I had a one-seventh before me, as I had suspected. That's a very interesting device you have there, commented Dr. Brock, eyeing the reducer nervously. Ingenious, really. I spotted another suspicious fraction. Could it be the five-ninths in disguise? It was a 34 out of 63, and it looked familiar. I dialed a two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nothing seemed to work. You can't reduce that one, said Dr. Brock. That fraction's already reduced to its lowest terms, I'm afraid. He was smiling in secret satisfaction as he said it, but he was right. That fraction was as reduced as it could be. I found a few more fractions that could be reduced. An eight-tenth became a four-fifths. A two-sixteenths became a one-eighth. And an 11 out of 22 became a one-half, but no five-ninths. I even looked through the garbage, full of old fractions and fraction pieces so small they were worthless. I found a piece from a one out of 28, a one out of 63, and a one out of 92. The five ninths was nowhere to be seen. There was something I was missing. Well, it was nice of you to visit, Dr. Brock began saying. I would invite you to stay longer, but I was just about to polish all of my fraction. This one out of 63, where did it come from? I interrupted. Uh, it's just an old broken fraction, sputtered Dr. Brock. Quickly, I raced back to the 34 out of 63. The tiny one out of 63 fit perfectly into it, making the fraction a 35 out of 63. This was the fraction that could be reduced. Wait, no, cried Dr. Brock. But it was too late. I had already pointed the reducer and dialed a seven. The 35 divided and became a five while the 63 divided and became a nine. There it was, right in front of me, the five ninths I had been looking for. Very clever, said Dr. Brock with a sneer. I didn't think you had it in you. He raced up the stairs and unhooked a rope. Suddenly, the one hole above me began falling all 100 pieces of it, looking like daggers. I dialed the reducer up to 100, aimed high, and jumped for cover. A solid disc landed with a clatter and rolled away. The one hole had become a single hole, no longer a fraction at all. But Dr. Brock was gone. Baron von Mathematique and Madame de Geometritique couldn't believe it when I told them the story. You did it, Mr. Factor, the Baron cried, saluting me. The fraction is yours, said Madame. You earned it. I put it in the most prominent place on my top shelf, right next to the reducer. Now every morning when dawn comes, the first ray of light through my window lands right on the five nights. It doesn't look half bad. The end. Here's a page that teaches you a little bit about the process of reducing fractions. Simple. That's the biggest little word in the fraction game. The simpler the fraction, the easier it is to add or subtract. In math speak, the reducer works by finding the greatest common factor, or GCF, 
the largest number that both the numerator and the denominator can be divided by. Look at the example below. When you take the fraction 2 tenths, you can reduce it by dividing both the numerator and the denominator by their greatest common factor, which is 2. When you do this, the fraction reduces to 1 fifth. Now the fraction is in its simplest terms. It can't be reduced further. So this makes it easier to find the lowest, lowest common denominator, which we call the LCD, and that's the smallest number that the denominator can be, while keeping in mind that the denominator needs to be the same in all fractions when you add or subtract them. Look at the following examples. Notice the diagrams that go with each example. As any fraction collector will tell you, reducing a fraction can be very handy, and who knows, it may be a very valuable fraction in disguise. So we'll be talking more about the process of finding the lowest common denominator and reducing fractions after the winter break. I hope you enjoyed this story.